Trey going to be that old guy in, 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 them, in sandals and, and, and khakis to put a butt. I've been saying this for how long? <laughs> like I can't step outside naked. He jumped into the river. What did you do? Did you run the I jumped in the in river? The river I let autocorrect make me look stupid on Facebook every day. With Luxembourg. Bar goal. I can't do it. It's Luxembourg. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That's what they all say. You gotta give me the hump, do the hump, and get some Oh, look at you, girl. <laughs> Tracking app on it, and it found that who's that actually using that. <laughs> Welcome home, gentlemen from the fourth infantry division, fourth ID. Yeah, yeah. I think he was trying to be funny, but it kind of escalated. I think he was trying to hit her on a discount. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you used to the him, but they played the same old. Yeah. Yeah. Morning, America. Wakey, wakey, bakey, bakey. I just went a little longer with that one because I was like, I was just feeling it. I felt good. I felt, I really, I really felt it. I was like, oh wow, that was. It just felt really good. What's up, America? When I say America, I really mean Scotty and Cammy. What's up, Americans? <laughs> God, it's my a, cough is high. It's a goddamn America. It burnt my tongue. You ever notice, like, when, when we happens. show up to save the world? Everybody's like, oh, fuck. Now we're never going to hear the end of it because they showed up and saved the world. Like every other country feels that way about us. We show up more like, hey, we're here to save your fucking sorry ass again. What's up? <laughs> I love watching World War II movies. Like, And then the Americans came. And we were like, thank God those goddamn Yanks can fight like hell. I was why is this, this World War II documentary. I was watching this British dude that was like one of the voices. It was awesome. God damn Yank. <laughs> the way he said it too. Those goddamn Yanks could fight like hell. I was like, damn, let them know how you really feel. <laughs> goddamn Yanks. <laughs> yeah, the South knows if Yanks can fight goddamn well too, don't ya? <laughs> so does the Mexico, don't ya? <laughs> Americans, we just got grit, son. <laughs> we even got a channel called Grit. That's how much grit we got. <laughs> we got a movie called Grit too. <laughs> By the way, Grit is the channel your grandfather watches, in case anyone doesn't know what channel that is. <laughs> so, it's Monday. Hi, Scotty, Cammy. Hello. Good morning. Y'all know tomorrow's Mardi Gras Day, right? Well, technically, it's Fat Tuesday. Mardi Gras has been this whole week, but whatevs. You know, it's Mardi Gras days. Look it. I got a I got a. Next- Every Tuesday is Fat Tuesday for me. So I got to you're, so you're stupid. stupid. Oh my god. You're so you're an idiot. <laughs> but uh, I even got like my 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 big beaded necklaces with naked ladies hanging from it and everything. I go hard. You'll see. Oh. I'm busting nice. out, I'm busting out all my Mardi Gras stuff tomorrow. I was going to show you but nobody gets a preview of the naked titty chain. The naked titty girl chain. I got one. Really? I think I have three. I think I have three or four of them. But one of my my oldest daughter wanted one. And I was like, "Well, you're 18 now. A little hard to tell you no." Sure, have at it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, "I'd rather you have a naked t- naked lady titty girl than showing yours to get the beads." So fair enough, just have it, keep it. <laughs> See, that's how you mitigate as a parent, bro. I'm a good parent. You got to learn when to cut your losses and just let them have their way, so they don't do something stupid at her. That's a word. Don't shake your head at me, Cammy. God damn it. So, <laughs> let's get to uh, Trey and the triple headlines. We'll try to roll with, with the punches here, guys. I forgot to put the breaks in here, but you guys pretty much know kind of how we do the breaks anyway. It's usually every couple stories, unless the headlines take a long time, then we do those first, and then whatever. So, yeah, just roll with it. So, I've got some weird and fun, crazy stuff. So, first off, uh, Chris Hansen stepping aside from The Bachelor uh, this is turning out to be kind of a huge thing. He's being reportedly, uh, essentially, he's saying he's leaving on his own free will, but you know he's being forced out, right? Um, but he's being forced out because of some things that he said that seemed a bit insensitive. I digress. Some of you might be aware of a, a young lady by the name of uh, uh, Lindsay, oh God, what the hell is Lindsay's last name? I can't even remember Lindsay's last name. But anyway, Lindsay from The Bachelor, who is now the, the host on E.T., okay? So anyway, the reason why this is important is she ha- she was actually interviewing the host of The Bachelor, right? And Extra's host, uh, Lindsay, they, they, they're getting into how the host, or, or I'm sorry, one of The Bachelorette, or, or bachelor eligible women or whatever you want to call it, right? 
apparently uh, Extra does a homework because they did a little digging and they pulled up a picture of um of 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 Rachel, th- this girl named Rachel that's on the show. If you, if people watch the show are going to understand this, but for context, the girl's name Rachel. Just so you, I can talk about Lindsay and Rachel, and y'all know I'm not talking about the same person, right? Okay. So there's Lindsay, there's Rachel, and then there's of course Chris Harrison, the host of The Bachelor, right? So Lindsay hosts Extra. Just so y'all can keep up with my drama here, right? <laughs> Lindsay hosts Extra. <laughs> Rachel's on The Bachelor as a ba- as an eligible bachelorette for the current Bachelor, um, which is um, I can't think of his name, but he's real handsome looking black dude. I can't think of his name. I think he's the first black ba- black African American Bachelor guy, right? Um, if I remember right, like that's uh, you know they've been trying to trying to be a little bit more inclusive on The Bachelor than other than Barbie and Ken, right? <laughs> y'all know why I stopped? Why I only watched The Bachelor for like one season? It's because by season three i was just like bachelor bachelor barbie and ken again okay here we go again so um anyway but this so here's what happened that got interesting so Lindsay has this photo of rachel from when she was a sorority girl in college right in the south and in the picture the bachelorette uh sorry the bachelorette's name is rachel Lindsay, by the way so this is where it gets confusing and fun but anyway the bachelorette rachel Lindsay. um is in a photo at the time um they're they're at a party that you would refer to as or anyone would refer to as an old south antebellum party which is basically a we can't let go of the fact that we lost the slavery war now we all know it wasn't over slavery it was because lincoln got elected and we've all had that history lesson on this show because we're not fucking ignorant but to be we also all know that lincoln wasn't even for freeing the slaves he was for whatever kept the union together f y i when you martyr somebody be careful but the south knew the minute he was killed he was going to be a martyr by the way did you know that there's a, there's a couple couple big time famed generals and writers that that literally said that like that literally told their people do not kill him you will literally murder him if you kill him and then they killed him <laughs> and look at they martyred him he would have been a a probably above average president had he not been killed in office true story because instead of being a martyr he would have been faulted for the war in the south let's be honest but anyway let's get back on track so um with this said the picture of Rachel Lindsay um, from the for, from the Bachelorette um, told er- Erica. I mean, t- told the former uh, extra correspondent this. He said, "I saw the picture of her at a soror- or oh, sorry, she the girl said this. She said, "I saw the picture." Um, 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 uh, let me see here. That were her at a sorority party five years ago. Uh, that's like boom. Uh, Harris, this was Harrison talking. He said, I'm like, really? So then she replies, the picture was from 2018 at an old South antebellum party. That's not a good look. Harrison would reply back to the reporter. Well, Rachel is, well, Rachel, is it a good look in 2018? It's not a good look in 2021 because there's a big difference there. And, uh, she replies back. It's never a good look. If I went to that party, what would I represent at that party? And she was a black woman. Well, obviously, at an old antebellum party, what would a black person represent there? Ta-da! So there lies within the problem of having old antebellum parties to begin with. So he goes on to say, you're 100% right in 2021. That was not the case in 2018. And again, I'm not defending Rachel. I just know that I don't know 50 mil- I don't know 50 million people did that in 2018. That was the type of party a lot of people went to and again, I'm not defending it. I didn't go to it. Um, but here's my thing is, and so he, he would later apologize for these. Uh, he's stepping down and he would, and he later would apologize. Um, but it's kind of ironic that racial insensitivity becomes a topic during the season of the first black male bachelor. And it just proves my point that America has a long way to go. Let me tell you something. If you're celebrating wartime prior to slavery, so your party would really only have white people at it. Let's just be honest. If you're still par- if you're still celebrating antebellum parties, let's get away from Harrison. Harrison just put his foot in his mouth. And listen, if you don't own your show and you put your foot in your mouth, good fucking luck, dude. I'm telling you, good fucking right. luck. You better be the owner and executive <laughs> producer of your show or you could be fucking fired. And I promise you, he didn't go because he wanted to. He went because he was forced out. Let's be honest. We all know what happened. He got cancel cultured. But here's the thing is, I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm not against cancel culture. There is nothing more mighty than you shutting off your fucking 
fucking TV for their advertisers if you don't fucking like the people on it. There is nothing more powerful than you boycotting a fucking dipshit with your mighty dollar. So I actually support quote unquote cancel culture. It's called having a fucking opinion. And if you don't like something, you, see people don't like the word cancel culture because here's why. Because they're like, oh, you're going to cancel my company because I said something stupid. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do is I'm not going to buy stuff from somebody that doesn't even think I'm a fair and equal person. So yeah, I am not going to endorse your business. Yes, I'm going to tell my friends that you're a bad business to do business with. Yes, I'm going to tell my family never to purchase from you. Yes, it's called the vote of the dollar, dick shit. It's not called cancel culture, fuck nut. So why do I support cancel culture? Because it's called voting with your dollar, fuck face. We've done it for years. But the minute it started to happen to these big corporations, they created this whole thing called camp- cancel culture, then said you guys were a bunch of candy-ass pansy babies in, in response to their dipshit things. No, guys. Americans have been voting with their mighty dollar for 240 fucking years. And I could be willing to bet that Americans will be voting with their mighty dollar for another 240 to come. So, my point being is... If we are magnificently enough to be gracious enough to last a half a fucking millennium, we'll probably be voting with our dollar that entire time, nut sack, because that's how we became a country. Come on. Come the fuck on. Come the fuck on. Rich dudes got tired of being taxed and funded a private army to go after the British. Come the fuck on. Do you guys know anything about history or are you just fucking stupid? I'm, I'm being honest. Not you two. I mean, not, not my host. My gracious hosts, they get their history lessons in their in their programming, so they, they know what's up. <laughs> so, um, in other news, uh, actually, hold on. Let me flip-flop. I want to do that story last because that nutsack deserves a good fucking ta- a good dressing down, so we'll get to that in a second. Um, nearly 170 million people are under winter or blizzard conditions, leaving some nutsacks to say, that's why global warming's not real, because the whole continental United States is under a deep freeze, and I'm going, no, fuck oh, face. Oh, my goodness. The United States records <laughs> its hottest year on history and then has its coldest winter the next year. That is the purest fucking definition of global warming, you fucking nutsack. Yep. It's not, oh, it's just going to get hot. No, no, it will get there in like 500 years. What will happen first, though, is extreme climactic shifting, meaning extreme drought and heat in the summer and extreme freeze and snow in the winter. That's literally what it means. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Read a book. Holy shit. In the long run, though, here's the real, here's the real problem. My fucking, please. please read a book. My fucking toes feel like popsicles right now. That's the real problem with the whole situation. Anyway, um, I will tell you this. I'm super duper worried about the poor. I get very worried about the people who can't afford their light bill. Their oh, heat bill. I get very worried about the people who don't have a roof over their house. And I see them on the corners with their grocery carts. Dude, I saw two abandoned grocery carts yesterday driving down the street. I was driving down, the, I was driving, going, so Cammy and I go to Pablo Viejo's every year for Valentine's Day because it's our favorite little Mexican joint. And uh, that's where we went last year before everything went crazy. Uh, so this year we just ordered takeout instead because I didn't want, I wanted, you know, that's, that's, our, that's our joint. So I wanted to get us a little takey, takey schmakey. Um, it's, it's something we go to like three or four times a year. It's super special times and that's it. Um, usually it's somebody's birthday or something. Um, every once in a while, Cammy and I just go, I want Pablo Viejo. And we just drop in. But most of the time it was. It was he says, I want don't at me like that. Don't at me like that. Like you don't like those fajitas, motherfucker. <laughs> so yeah, she's quiet now. She's like, I'm not gonna say nothing about the fajitas though. But he's still stupid. <laughs> he's the one that usually brings it up though. True. I did bring it up for Valentine's Day too. I was like, I have a surprise for us. You us. Back to the <laughs> back to the cold. Uh, Loveland, Colorado residents were asked to turn down their thermostat to conserve electricity and energy. I, I'm, I'm not surprised. Uh, and energy, yeah. Me, I'm that asshole that turns mine all the way up to 74. I'm like, no, we must force the the cold out <laughs> by by creating a heat <laughs> barrier inside. He's a big baby. I am, bro. I had on the wool socks, thermal underwear inside. <laughs> I, this is. I'm still at 68. Eight. It feels cold. It feels like a cold six. So cold outside, though. This old Arizona boy. <laughs> negative 14. That real Arizona boy coming out now. Like I love Ridiculous. Colorado. I was born here, but for most of you, know that I, I spent my adult and late 
late child and adult years here, but I didn't grow up here as a kid kid when you really get used to things. Now, I did grow up in Germany, but I promise you, if it was just bitter, freezing cold outside, we just wouldn't go outside. It was that easy. And my school was like a block away. So even if you had to go out to walk to school, it really wasn't that bad. The, the benefits of living on a small base in Europe is your school's literally a block away. Um, but, uh, but I just, I don't ever remember it being this cold in Europe. And that's, I think, the trade off is that people are like, oh, well, it's cold, so there's no global warming. I'm like, no, no, you fucking moron. No. It doesn't work that way. Like, by God, it's like you have to be able to view things abstractly. And in this case, it works reversely forward. And I know that's a hard thing for some of you because some of you can't even think forward. So thinking reversely forward, good luck. So anyway. My poor dog, Scotty. Like I, They know there's global warming well, cooling. I, they can't be out there longer than two minutes. Their poor little paws start freezing. I feel so Literally. bad for them. Like, they don't even want to take a shit, bro. They're like, oh, hold it until next week. Like a girl. <laughs> I seen a picture of a guy that throws a piece of plywood on the ground when it snows so that he can lift the piece of plywood up and his little dog can go to the bathroom on dry land. Huh. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Because his dog will not go to the bathroom out in the snow. Bro, I'm telling you. Mine are the same way. I was thinking about using my broom and just like sweeping off an area where there. You right. Know, just a little spot for you. I yeah. ain't got no background in engineering, but go give, right that here. Guy, give that guy a scholarship. Seriously. Give that guy a thinker scholarship. He thought that went through right. pretty well. Because even I'm like, huh, motherfucker. I straight Samuel L. Jackson him. Motherfucker. <laughs> I'll be a son of a bitch. All right. I'm with it, though. All right. So, oh, damn, I don't have a lighter. Okay, during the break, I got to grab a lighter. I can't even smoke my weed. Now I'm mad. I thought I left one in here. See, I get all grabby. As soon as oh, I can't no. find a lighter, I just grab oh, the first no. one I see. That's my problem. I get all grabby, and then I, I take the weed lighter out of the studio. Like, I have a studio lighter, studio bowl, studio <laughs> ashtray. Everything at the studio has its own everything. I even have... Studios coffee pot. It's a thermos. We fill it up, and this is our coffee pot in the studio, so we so we don't have to go back and make coffee or get coffee. I mean, we really we really improvise here. I could, I, I I thought of my time on a boat and was like, just imagine if you couldn't leave the room for anything except to go pee. Just like you couldn't leave the boat for anything, even to go pee. Actually, technically speaking, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so, last one. Nutsack of the weekend award goes to Democratic New York Governor. Como, my favorite news reporter's yeah. older dipshit brother. Because I do like his brother. I do like Chris Como. Great, great legal minded uh, reporter. He was, a, he was a prosecutor for many, many years, you know. But anyway, and a, le- a lawyer for many years. But anyway, so, um, so check this out. There is a scandal coming out that says that Andrew Como, Governor Andrew Como of New York, and some of his cohorts covered up the amount of deaths that were taking place at um, uh, uh, retirement old folk home type, you know, nursing home type places, right? And that they covered it up because it would make them look bad. And they covered it up because they were following the presidential CDC orders. So this thing is is super hairy because you have a cover-up, which is wrong, but they followed the president's orders, which would have made them look bad later. And... They didn't want to look bad because, or look like they look bad, or look like they were following the president's orders because he's a dipshit. Uh, president Trump was a dipshit at the time on this, so that's my understanding of it from a very simple lower middle class income fucking understanding. Okay, motherfuckers, that's my understanding of it. Is he? They didn't want to follow the presidential and CDC orders to put sick patients back in a nursing home where maybe people weren't sick or leave them there when they tested positive, like an idiot. They didn't want to do that, so instead they did that because they were told to but didn't report the numbers and then tried to cover it up. That about get that nut sack in the sack for you guys? Now comes the fun part. How m- Go ahead. How many different stories do you think we're, we're going to hear like this? Oh, I bet I done. bet there's going to be a few state to states. Because here's the thing, and here's the thing is, you might as well have just reported the numbers because the Republicans said you were lying anyway. So you might as well have fucking reported them. You're an idiot. Now let me go one step further. Right. You're super big fucking morons, Republicans that is, in the state of New York because they say he should be impeached for this. I say you might be right. 
But I also say that because not one of you thought the pres the former president should be impeached for for literally inciting an insurrection against the Constitution of the United States and the lawful vote of the people. You said that he shouldn't be impeached for that. Republicans have now lost all all credibility on all things impeachment probably for the next 20 or 30 years because if you if an insurrection isn't impeachable then lying about a few people dying from a virus that you denied is not impeachable either this hey i i told you guys this was going to get real fucking fun when the republicans failed to do their fucking job well it's fun time boys and girls it's literally fucking fun time you 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 cannot impeach Governor Chris Como for anything he did because you didn't impeach Trump for inciting an insurrection. Do you not understand the consequence of your actions, Republicans? And it's ironic that uh, literally days after they fail, the Republicans fail to impeach the president, New York Republicans come out and say that they need to impeach the Democratic governor of New York. Now listen, I want to be very clear on one thing. I think that this is absolutely an impeachable offense by the governor. I do. I think I don't think that he'll be convicted, um, and I don't know that he should be convicted of it. But I do think that they want to strip his powers for emergency authorization and stuff like emergency issues, and give those to the the the, the state senate and house people. Right? They want to strip that privilege from him, and then they want to impeach him. I think that they should invoke. I think they should vote to impeach him. I think that they should not convict him at the impeachment, and then I because even when you impeach a president and or a governor, you're setting. The the standard that this behavior is not okay. It doesn't matter if they can get convicted. Like when George, when, or when uh, William Jefferson Clinton or Bill, oh Bill, got impeached for getting his dick sucked in the Oval Office and lying about it, we were setting the precedent that the president shouldn't be lying to the American people under oath. Period. That's the end of it. Period. That's the precedent we were setting. When we impeached Donald Trump for his conversations with the uh, Ukrainian president trying to get the Ukrainian president to dig up dirt, dirt on his opponent, we were setting the precedent that that is unlawful behavior and it is wrong behavior to literally pay a foreign adversary to dig up dirt on your on your opponent in a political uh, competition. It's, uh, it's wrong. We set the precedent it's wrong. So even though Republicans failed to have a nutsack, and we all saw that go down this weekend, the reality is... Is, is that we still did set the precedent that you can't incite an insurrection against the United States of America because it's wrong. The House literally at least set that precedent. You know, I, I, I don't understand why impeachment power isn't wielded more often when presidents make mistakes, huge mistakes. Like, for instance, Hillary Clinton should have been impeached for Benghazi. Dude, she was the fucking Secretary of State at the time. She can be impeached. Impeachment is warranted for appointed offices, guys. Meaning, if the president gave you your fucking job, you can be impeached. If the House and Senate confirmed you, you can be impeached for your job. Otherwise, you probably got hired and you can be fired, bitch. <laughs> so, the reality is, is I do believe that Governor Como should be impeached. I don't necessarily think he needs to be removed from office. Um, and I do think that lying to the all of us about the numbers is fucking, it's dumb. Governor Como is a moron, a political moron. And let me explain to you why. Because he walked right into the Republican trap. He did exactly what the Republicans were doing lying about the numbers why would you do what your opponents are doing that we're literally brutally holding them accountable in the news media and in the public why would you do that it's ridiculous governor como is a fucking political moron fucking political moron but like i said republicans you've lost all credibility on impeachment so just tone it down pussy boys and pussy girls because you lost all your credibility Moving on. So let's get to our first main subject of the fucking day. Scotty, you got the coronavirus numbers. Our second main subject, I mean. Sorry. You've got the coronavirus by the numbers. Has the weekend done anything better than push us closer to 500,000 dead Americans? So, yeah, I got uh, some great news, some good news, and some bad news. Oh, you sound like me every morning. Continue on. <laughs> <laughs> great news. Yesterday, we only had 1,800. Deaths compared to <clears throat> these are coming the off of the weekend. Day before, compared to the day before on the thirteenth, thirteenth, where we had three thousand three hundred seventy-three. Thirteenth. Thirteenth. <laughs> so that's the great news, or I guess that's the good news. The great news is new cases continue to drop. 
Mm-hmm. That's good. And my computer is so slow right now. But yeah, those new so cases are dropping. They're, they're, they're so steadily they are, so dropping. They are steadily dropping. That's good. Yes. Um, but the bad news is our hospitals, at least here locally uh, right. in Colorado Springs, Colorado, are still full. Uh, a lot interest, of stories yeah. I'm hearing about people are are still the the sick people that had to go to the hospital are still sick in the hospital. Uh, and I mean, I know this for a fact because I'm still waiting on a surgery that I can't have until these hospitals calm down. Same. I don't care what the doctor um, says about my knees or shoulder. I'm not doing nothing until all this shit's done. My computer finally caught up. So our new cases as of yesterday were 63,850, uh, which compared to the 12th at 99,558, that's a good, good sign. Right on. Hopefully those numbers keep dropping. Yeah, there are, you know, there's the good within the bad. Um, I'm still worried about this UK variant, the South Africa variant. There's several variants that, that aren't responding well. So far, we're seeing like a more of an efficacy of around 50% of the Moderna, vi- um, Moderna vaccine on the South African variant. As a matter of fact, I was reading a report, I want to say on Friday, that said that um, South Africa had suspended purchasing the Moderna vaccine because it basically wasn't effective enough against the... Um, against the virus by the way shout out to our listener Cortland out in oklahoma who is now a officially a business owner so i want to give him a shout out congratulations on your new business Cortland out there in oklahoma i hope you do well good sir business is fun business is good <laughs> so um let's go uh you know what let's take a quick break and then we'll be right back next with cammy and well damn that's a headline damn near the whole world hold or sorry damn near the whole leadership got indicted whoa like in where? Oh, in a town. In a town. In a town. Not necessarily in a country. But if I said Myanmar, Burma, y'all would have been like, okay, yeah, yeah, I see that though. <laughs> Good. Good morning, Wake and Bake listeners. This is your guy, Scotty, checking in with you in the morning here, waking and baking with you and getting you started for your day. Have a good one. Everyone loves you, except for Dre. Yo, you got to check Young Fat. The hottest artist for the mighty CO, self-made Colorado favorite artist, Young Fats. Two G's and two T's introduces us to a brand new single. You better check Stay Dangerous. So serious, stay dangerous, stay dangerous, stay dangerous, keep it dangerous. Available for your purchase right now, iTunes and Amazon Music. Subscribe and follow for the latest tracks from Young Fats. You'll be catching the vibes and stream free right now on all major platforms. Young Fats, vibing the mountains all the way. I need more of you, ain't threatened. And looking for your support? Download on iTunes and Amazon Music today. Two G's and two T's with Young Fats. Check it, check it out. I need more of you like mamas. Hey, 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 what's happening, what's happening? It's your boy Bubba Sparks. If you didn't know prior to this moment, you better know for sure. Anytime I'm rolling through Colorado Springs, I'm checking out Wake and Bake America. How could you not be listening to Wake and Bake? Holding it down with Cammy, Renee, and Mr. Trey. All the way, twice on Sunday. Y'all probably ain't on on Sunday, but it's all good. Y'all, y'all, y'all should be. Don't copy Britney, so don't copy me. Don't copy me. America. Wakey, wakey, bakey, bakey. All right, so we didn't get to do our Trashy Friday Freestyle, so here we go. Uh, 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 uh. I like this beat. Uh, 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 uh. There's a lot of snow outside. It's cold. My toes are frozen. Yo, listen, it's an 80s rap about the freezing out style, and this stuff is crap. I'm telling you right now, the snow straight sucks, and my dogs are like, yo, my paws is fucked. Uh. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> That's all I got. That's my trashy Friday freestyle for Monday. I'm not. I'm not going any further. I do real good freestyles actually in the car. True story. 
You have to go to my Instagram for that, though. It really is hard on the, the pup's paws outside. No, seriously. My Don't dogs are like, fuck folks. this shit. <laughs> they have paw been- socks for this type of weather. that uh, like they, they use them up in the Arctic all the time for snow sled teams. But um, they have st- something for this. But yeah, you but it's it. been a long time since it's been this yeah, cold. Yeah, we're talking negative. Right. It's negative 14. Uh, yeah. At last check, I posted bitching and moaning about it this morning, actually. <laughs> You know what I post about it. It's officially affected my life in a way I don't like. Um, All right. So let's get to it. It's time for Well, Damn, That's a Headline. And, uh, of course, today's show and is brought to you by our friends over at Apothecary Farms. Don't forget, they are the leaders in concentrates. Get your Apothecary Farms in Pueblo, Colorado Springs, Denver, and, of course, hundreds of locations in Oklahoma. Damn. Oh. <laughs> You're disgusting. Down on the range. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I was just going to act like it didn't happen and keep moving on, but you had to say something. Well, it literally broke my eardrums. So, let's yeah, get to... One. Thank you. Damn, that's a headline brought to you by Sick Tees. That's S-I-K-T-E-E-Z dot com for all your printing needs. That's Sick dot com. So, damn near the whole damn town leadership got indicted. Okay, well, I'm interested so, now. the mayor, police chief city clerk and a former city clerk of a town in Iowa have all been charged following a multi-year investigation that accuses them of misappropriating city funds, Mm. producing fraudulent public records, using a taser on a civilian in exchange for cash. What the fuck? Yeah. And concealing embezzlement. God damn. Well, I mean, obviously, see, I hate concealment charges because no shit. Of course, I tried to cover up my crime. You can't charge me with the crime and then charge me with covering it up, dick face. Yeah. So that sucks. The Iowa Attorney General's office filed charges on February 11th against the current and former public officials of the city of Armstrong, o- Iowa, located in Emmett County, close to the Minnesota border. Okay, so they're over there on the like the Des Moines side. I mean, not the Des Moines side. I'm sorry. The um, the uh, 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 no, the four. It's the four. It's the damn Quad Cities area over there. So I'm betting closer to where they're at. Maybe a little north of that. So Davenport. Cammie, God damn it! That was the city I was thinking of. Davenport, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> Cammy, have you seen Ozarks? No. No, but I heard that's a really good show. Oh dang. I just thought Ozarks when I was reading your story, Cammy. So this is I really like, did. You guys got to see. You guys got to watch it. at least at least the first it. episode or two of it, the first it, it season. You might get hooked. It base this basically kind of goes into, you know, that. There's another one like a, a sky, big sky, or something like that. That's like we're like this. The, the, the law enforcement is in on the covering up of people disappearing and stuff. It's it's kind of like same weird, crazy. I bet it really goes on in America stuff. So. Mayor Greg Buham, Police Chief Craig Merrill, City Clerk Tracy Lane, and former City Clerk Connie Thackeray were charged with felony and misdemeanor offenses in a 21-count joint trial um, information approved by the Emmett County District Court. Buham, Merrill, and Thackeray face a top count of ongoing criminal conduct, a Class B felony, while Lang faces a top count of fraudulent practice in the first degree, which is a Class C felony. Yeah, it looks like they were, three of the four suspects were picked up on Friday. I'm still trying to like find, arrested, read the rest of this about the taser part, too. It's like, the inve- investigation uncovered wrongdoing committed by the defendants, including but not limited to misappropri- misappropriation of city funds. The president, the presentation of fraudulent public records, deploying a taser against a civilian in exchange for cash. False. That, that's basically like, um, what do you call it? Like they uh, intimidation. You know what I mean? Like, give me that money or else I'm going to tase you. And falsification of ledgers to conceal embezzlement. So that's a little bit more of a breakdown. Well, and then you're getting into, now you got to get into things like um, there's going to be state charges because you embezzled state and city funds, right? Well, but there's also, there could be potentially federal charges because mm-hmm. yep. um, some a lot of the cities and states are given grant money from the federal government for certain projects like roads and water and things like this. And so if you stole a penny of the fucking feds money, bro, you're getting charged federally. That's the end of it. They well, do not fuck around. Well, and they're saying more arrests may be 
pending related to the case as oh, well. Oh, shit. They said uh, the, file, the charges filed against the suspects stemmed from a multi-year investigation, but they did not disclose who else they had been investigating. Or, co- or they won't confirm yet if these potential arrests will occur. Hey, so let me tell you They're something. still in the thick of and it. Then Ozarks. Check this out. And then there's the branch offs, because I will tell you something right now, that if you are caught... Like, for instance, let's just say that I'm investigating you for being part of this embezzlement. And it turns out that you weren't part of the embezzlement. You were just used by the embezzlers. But during that investigation, I did find out that you are actually defrauding the government just in a different way. You're getting charged. So that's why I tell people, you better be careful who you fucks with because this is the kind of shit that brings trouble your way if you're doing something wrong anyway. And if you're doing something wrong, just know you're probably going to attract shady characters. And if you're from a small not town, slim shady, if you're from a small town, you're not excluded from from that. So, oh, this is privilege at its finest. I'm going to love watching the outcome of this. Oh, this is cute. Watch Ozarks. What is Scott? He's like, just watch Ozarks. It'll tell you everything you need to know, Trey. <laughs> I'm, now you got me like, all right, what the fuck is this Ozarks? Now I got to go find it. <laughs> hey, it's your girl, Cammie Renee from Wake and Bake America Show. Stay tuned for the Stump the Stoner where I make these guys look stupid. I mean, it ain't that hard anyways. Hey, Southern Colorado. When it comes to getting your shirts made and printed and also designs on other products you want, Southern Colorado has the premier shirt maker and designer. That's right. It's SickTees.com. Tell them. SickTees. And where can you find? SickTees.com. At SickTees.com. That's S-I-K-T-E-E-Z.com. SickTees.com. Your mom. SickTees. Has proudly sponsored Wake and Make America for four seasons. Apothecary Farms is the premier cannabis dispensary on the front range. When you think concentrates in Colorado, you think Apothecary Farms. With locations in Pueblo, Colorado Springs, and Denver, it is clear why Apothecary owns the cannabis concentrate game. How do you get your diamonds? Shatter, butter sauces, and come on, ambrosia? Just look up Apothecary Farms on Google or Weed Map. Get the best in concentrates. Don't hesitate to stop at Apothecary Farms. Hey, what's going on? It's the Hungry Hustling American Dream Afro Man. Wake and bake, America. Yeah, you're chilling with Mr. Ashtray. Uh, that's Mr. Trey, not Ashtray. You're listening to Mr. Trey, and you know why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trey gonna be that old guy in 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 the in pebbles and 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 khakis oh, with a butt. I've been saying this for how long? <laughs> like I can't step outside naked. He jumped into the river. What did you do? Did you run along the in. river? Man? I let yeah. autocorrect make me look stupid on Facebook every day with Luxembourg Bargo. I can't do it. It's Luxembourg. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That's what they all say. You trying to give me the hump to the hump to get something? Oh, oh, look at you, girl. <laughs> Tracking app on it, and it found that who that is that actually using that. <laughs> Welcome home, gentlemen from the Fourth Infantry Division, Fourth ID. Yeah, yeah. I think he was trying to be funny, but it kind of escalated. I think he was trying to hit her on a discount. Oh, oh. <laughs> listen, but they the same old. Yeah. Good morning, America. Wakey, wakey, bakey, bakey. Yeah, the Monday after democracy died. Good morning. What? <laughs> so, um, it's time to do talking, uh, or no, I'm sorry, stump the stoner. My bad. It's time for stump the stoner. Let's get your stump on. Stumpity stump, stump, stump. Yeah. All right, you guys ready? Who won last time? I don't remember. I did. I remember. Scotty failed to come back on the NFL questions. It was a Super Bowl edition. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember. All right, here's your first one. Oh, boy. What is the full title of the Prime Minister of the UK? What is he called? Supreme Leader of Awesomeness. Ooh. No, I'm just kidding. Hold on. Um, It would be... <laughs> The Prime Minister of 
the United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> He's actually called... His Royal Highness, his no. footstool, I don't know. Uh, he His actual Man full title is called First Lord of the Treasury. Oh, God damn. That's actually like legit sounding as fuck. I need to get that job. <laughs> Yo, Britain, I'm coming for you, Just baby. First Lord of something. I'm also a little Scottish, so I want my kilt, God damn it. Sorry. I take things personal. I want to explore all my cultures, especially that all kilt right, culture. Scotty, ready? That kilt culture's gangsta. You know they don't wear underwear, Yeah, right? give it to me. Y'all know they don't wear underwear, right? Kilt culture's gangsta. All right, Scotty. What is the Italian word for tomato? Tomato. <laughs> tomato. Uh, I'm waiting for him to say what? something dumb. I'm waiting for it. What is the Italian <laughs> word for tomato? It sucks when the word already has a vowel at the end, huh? You can't just oh, go, my oh, goodness. the end. <laughs> I just, the first thing I thought was meta. Meta? Are you, that's thing. what you're going to go Same with? thing. No, it's pomodoro. Yep. Pomodoro. Pomodoro. All right, ready, Trey? So it's really called pomodoro pasta, bro, not tomato pasta, just so y'all know. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, go. His royal lordship is ready. All right. Trey, what is the currency called of Poland? Oh, damn. Aren't they part of the EU? Hold on, wait a minute. Is this a trick question? Nope. Okay, no, so. It's, um, called, it's not. The, all, all, honestly, all Something EU different. nations, I think, still have their own they form do. of currency inside that country. Yeah. And what is their form of currency It's just all called? equal or whatever. But anyway, um, I'm going to go with the Polish po- coin, coin checky. I don't, I don't, I don't fucking know, dude. I'm even part. I, I'm a little Polish. These too. are tough, right? Like, Dang, is, the, is this like the entrance exam for fucking Harvard? What the fuck is this? It's called Zloty. We really pissed her off recently. Right? Zloty got too is many of those football called. questions right. Zloty? Yeah, no, I would. I, no, I'm sorry. I, Deutschmark. Z L O T Y. I I grew up in your Germany. Deutschmark. That's anyone? what Polish money is called. Yeah, there was this thing called Russia in between me and going to Poland back then. Just FYI. <laughs> Anyways, all right, Scotty. In a 1994 CBS interview, Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates performed what unusual trick on camera? Uh, Acting normal? Uh, I'm, ju- I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He uh, turned into his lizard uh, person self one time. Or the magic trick? Nope. Wait, what, what was the date, though? I forgot the date. I just date. said 1994. 94. 94. This is Scotty's mm. question, not yours, Trey. I know, but I'm going to guess mm. when he doesn't get it right. <laughs> I, when he doesn't get it right, because he's thinking of magic tricks. I'm like, which magic trick did he do? Which one? He pulled it's, a rabbit out of the hat. It's a trick. They didn't, it doesn't say a magic trick. I, I think I know because oh, I don't think Steve, this Steve, was but really a big gotta, thing before this. That'd be a man. Can I? Can I? No. Go ahead. Let go him ahead. Answer. answer first. Shut up. Rabbit out of the hat. No. Pull the rabbit out of the hat. My guess would be use a mouse. Nope. Oh. Nope. He jumped over an office chair. What? Well, that was some young ass Bill Gates right there, yo. He was like, "I'm still young." Right. Wee. No, um, I honestly thought it I would had have been impressed if he did it backwards. She said ninety five, so I thought it had something to do with like Windows ninety five, you know, because that's when Windows ninety five be- went, you know, right, ready? became Trey? public for the public. Um, <laughs> All right, Trey, how many Harry Potter books are there? Oh damn! So I know there's eight movies mm. or nine, mo- eight or nine movies, but that doesn't mean that's how many books there are because you know that doesn't always follow succession. So. Or does it? Shut up. I'm trying to think. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I'm going to go with eight. Nope. Seven. Damn it. They, I knew they stretched oh. out that eighth movie into two movies. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. Ready, Scotty? Should have never went with the movies. I knew it. I should have never fucking went with yes, the movies. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, Scotty. Who directed E.T. the Extraterrestrial in 1982? Uh, I I know this one. uh, Spielberg? Damn it. Yes. That was my job. guess, too. Damn it, because it's right. Yeah. Damn it. Damn it. 
All right, come on. All right, here's the his fourth. royal lordship is ready for here's his next question. Here's the fourth question. question. All right, Trey. The first rule is you don't talk about it. Is a reference to which movie? You don't talk about it. They say it in the movie, like throughout the whole movie. I know. <laughs> Let me guess. Oh, man. Oh, my. Let me guess. No, I know. it's Trey's. No. And I'm trying to think. It's like, don't talk about Albuquerque or something stupid like that or Cincinnati or something <laughs> dumb like that. And I can't remember. I'm just going to go with, um, I don't know. Las Vegas? No. Oh, you wanted the name of the movie? Yeah. Oh, um, I'm just going to go Ocean's Eleven. Nope. But that's not it. What do you think it is, Scotty, since you're... It's the first rule. It's the first rule in Fight Club. Yep. You don't oh, talk about Fight Club. Yeah, yep. damn it. Oh, shit. <laughs> now I feel dumb. Oh. All right, Scotty, here's your fourth question. Who starred in the film in 1973 called Enter the Dragon? Oh. Bruce motherfucking Lee. Come on. How is yep, he getting all he the easy right. questions? Okay, he, Fight these Club. These are not easy. Fight Club was an easy one, though. 1973. I just went off into space. Golly. All right. Here's the fifth one. Go ahead. I got to get back in this, right? Here's my only chance. And then Scotty can win it with his next one. God damn it. If I get back in it. All right, Trey. Go in the movie, in the movie Blade Runner. Shit, I haven't seen that in like fucking twenty years. What? <laughs> what is the term used for human-like androids? What were they called oh, in the movie? Fuck, man. I have, like I said, I haven't seen that fucking movie in twenty years, man. And I'm talking about I've seen like eighty-four Blade Runner, bro. Like seriously, fuck. Um, I'm gonna go with bots. No. They were called replicants. Oh, that sounds actually sounds way more cooler. Way more cooler. <laughs> way All, right. More cooler. All right, Scotty, last one. I was going to go I Robot Will hey. Smith style. Hey. Wh- hey. All right, Scotty, which Marvel superhero did Chris Evans play prior to his role as Captain America? Ooh. Hold on. I didn't catch the, the, the beginning of that question. Okay. Which Marvel superhero did Chris Evans play prior to his role as Captain America? Oh, man. Wait. So he played something other than Captain America? Yes. Before his role so, as Captain uh, it was right it was before Captain he played Captain America. <laughs> the problem is he'd been Captain America for like 10 years though. So like yeah. that's why he's messed up right now. I knew this one. In Marvel. It was in Marvel. Like I, I'm obsessed with Marvel, so. <laughs> uh, man. Flash. No, that ain't even. Ah, idiot. That ain't even Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need DC. this one. <laughs> Flash. <laughs> he played Human Torch. Oh, jeez. Flame on. Human Torch. Shoot. That's who he played. What? Yeah. yeah. Dude. Oh, my goodness. He's Flame On from motherfucking, uh, what you call it, the and Fantastic Four. Yes, yeah. Fantastic Five, or four. Yep. <laughs> Everybody was giving you hints oh, in the drop. Man. They were putting FF in the drop. Like, FF, bro, come on, FF. I'm over here laughing because I'm, like, ah, I'm like, yeah, Pretty Boy had another Pretty Boy role before he was Pretty Boy. <laughs> Anyone surprised here? <laughs> I was surprised you knew the difference between Chris Evan and Chris Pratt because I'd be fucking them two up all the time. All right. So anyway, uh, you win either way. Fuck yeah, you. Scotty won. Scotty won. I, how do I always know your questions but not my own? That <laughs> pisses me off. It pisses me off. So um, let's go into talking about the cannabis news. So Jersey says shroom penalties can be lowered, man. Yay. So legal cannabis might be facing a delay in uh, Jersey, but... Uh, the governor just made uh, the criminal penalties for shrooms like he's made them easier, or eased them, or made them lower. So, uh, Democrat Governor Phil Murphy of New Jersey signed a bill on Thursday of last week that reduces the criminal penalties for possession of small amounts of psilocybin mushrooms. Under the bill, those convictions for possession of less than one ounce, uh, you know, 
28 grams. So just rock 27, baby. Um, of magic mushrooms will face a lighter punishment, including less time in jail and lower fines. Current New Jersey law classifies possession of psilocybin mushrooms as a third degree crime carrying penalties of up to five years in prison prison and a fine of up to thirty five thousand dollars under the legislation um now by murphy in uh, new jersey possession of less than one ounce will be charged as disorderly person's offense penalties include up to six months in county jail and a thousand dollar fine so black folks still going to jail in new jersey just y'all understand that y'all like how i did jersey Mm -hmm. we know how it work out in jersey Every hey, but like Hamilton said, everything's legal in Jersey, so they'll probably be the last one to do it. Because <laughs> you know, everything used to be literally you could just go to Jersey to kill each other. You're like fuck it, I don't like you. Well, I don't like well, you. That's probably fuck why it. they are the way they. Let's are Let's go now, to Jersey right? and shoot each other. <laughs> well, that's why they are the way they are now, right? They're trying to. Well, make sure it's- well, okay. Technically, history lesson: dueling was considered like unchivalrous to to be a. Uh, to be to get to to enter into a duel is considered to be ungentlemanly. So most state uh, legislatures had started outlawing dueling as, as long ago as in the in the 1700s. You know what I mean? And long story short of it, um, Jersey was like the one place you could still go duel over there on the East Coast that was close to New York because New York had already outlawed it. So there's a little history lesson. Moving on. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty cool. You know, I think that you have to understand that when things grow out of the ground and you can literally pluck them and now you're all of a sudden a felon, that's a little insulting to me. It always has been. It always has been. Well, you shouldn't grow them. Well, you shouldn't hate them. I mean, I I can do this all day. Shrooms grow naturally though. You don't have to like plant them necessarily. Truth. Actually, very much true that uh, they, they kind of just pop up like a boner. (laughs) <laughs> so uh let's do this uh that's all i got though jersey gotta lower the penalties on shrooms but like i made the, i made the, the the statement so black folks you're still going to jail in jersey because my point is this if you're poor and you can't afford a good lawyer to negotiate you a deal that doesn't send you to jail for six months plan on doing some time and getting put on probation because people are dicks and until it's completely decriminalized to be honest with you what has it really done it's made it to where you pay less money, like literally less than one third of a percent of what the old fine used to be. And you're doing like one fortieth of the time if you go to jail. Do you know what I mean? That's pretty good math, actually. That's I think that's precise. Let's go to break. Boom. Look, the recipe for success is pretty practical. You lead a little weight, you sprinkle in a little bit. You grab some coffee, and we get you out the door the right way for show. It's Wake and Bake America weekday mornings. Are you ready to get turned up, lit, and whatever it is, or even boot scoot and boogie? Then you need to come down to Copperhead Road every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and hang out with your boy and the Wake and Bake America crew. Ladies night, we got you. Friday night, come on, we got you. Saturday night, don't miss the all-ages party at every weekend, a half a block south of North Carefree on Academy. That's right. Come hang out with the Wake and Bake America crew. Your boy, Mr. Trey on the ones and twos. We got hip hop. We got country. Why go anywhere else when it's all at one spot? That's right. Copperhead Road. That Copperhead Road. Are you a business owner and want to highlight your business? Call 727-318-2956. Let's highlight your business and captivate Southern Colorado's largest group of spenders. They're active consumers looking for your services. To advertise with Wake and Bake America on Blazin' 98.5, that's right, your morning show, call 727-318-2956. Or email us at wake, the letter N, bakeamerica at gmail.com. Advertise with your morning show because it's simple, smart business. Business, and it works. 727-318-2956. And let's start your ad campaign today. Hey, it's your girl, Cami Renee, and you're listening to Wake and Bake America Show. You know I bring you the best. We're smoking. <laughs> Good morning, America. Wakey, wakey, bakey, bakey. Oh, Scotty, this is that beat, though. Girl. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh, sorry, it was that, it was that 50 cent. <laughs> 21 questions? You know what I'm talking about? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite one because I'm like, if you if you because I know that it, I know that it's easy to love a rich man, ladies. Like, don't get it fucking twisted. It's easy to love a guy that can literally give you whatever you want, provide for you. It's even better if he's not a douche about it, right? So it's easy to love a rich guy. But I could promise you, if your if your ass is poor or you in the struggle for real, and y'all two struggling together, and she ain't left you for money, man, then she then then that's a real one. Because the truth is, if you can love a motherfucker poor. That's the motherfucker that wants you there when he's rich. That's the truth. Like I don't like. Ooh, I, look, I got. <laughs> that is not okay, <laughs> Scotty. How are you sweating right now? Some I'm freezing. I don't know. Maybe I didn't put enough deodorant on this morning. <laughs> All right, Scotty. What do you got for us? I got pit sweats. It's not cool. I got frozen, messed up internet, but that's okay. So we have a story of a a mom doing a YouTube video for gender reveal time. and uh, uh for reveal. I'm watching and it right now, the Scott. video is so funny. Yeah, so uh, the dad is sitting in the middle of the living room and he's got a tube. He's sitting there cranking on the back side of it to get it to explode out the end to reveal the gender family all in the living room the, the older sister is, is stands all excited to see who it is who's it who is it a boy or a girl blue or, boy or, pink, or a girl or pink. We, yeah we did the same well i got the, it? i got the privilege of knowing ahead of time so that made me happy you know as a as a great <laughs> and the guy sitting there cranking on the back side of this thing and it's oh, not and going off and the sister so he the turns it around right next to him turns it around and gives it one more good crank and that thing goes off right into the baby maker. His man giblets. <laughs> this baby was like, I'm going to be your last kid. <laughs> That's the last one. Oh, and by the way, it was blue. So, so, so at least he's, at least he's ending with one to carry on his name. Right, your 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 first son's first act of defiance is <laughs> is to kick you in the dick to the literal sense. Kick you in the nut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just want. I'm waiting for it to happen oh, right now. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, this is gonna be bad. Oh, this is gonna be. Oh, then he turned it the wrong way. Oh, oh, right in the man. Damn Oh, he's just he's he's in pain. Oh, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Oh, Philip King and me oh, it, were ninjas sparring in his bro, yard. And he's he in kicked me position. in the dick one time. Oh, I just straight dropped. It was over. <laughs> what? I just watched. Yeah, this <laughs> way. <that's laughs> anyway, he just fucking drops. It, it is like game over. If it was, if this oh, was a video yeah, game in the eighties, it would have popped up in tw- an eight bit writing. Game over. <laughs> game over. <laughs> that's funny i'll go ahead and post this one on our wake and bake uh, you know, if you can, you can find the, if you can it, find folks. the video itself and post it without actually posting the uh, article that's always better it gets more likes when they don't have to read the article true story <laughs> right <laughs> um our, our listeners are like we don't want to read the Trey. we don't go straight read. to the we video don't, we don't want to read just put the video up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh to wrap up today's show that was a pretty good one to wrap up today's show we have cammy with this week's the happy news cammy has the happy news it makes life suck a little less do, 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 do. this is a crappy jingle for her yeah. segment <laughs> So I have a, yeah. a really cool story, <laughs> Thanks, actually. Scotty. Thank um, you. Real it's another way for us to be uh, that we're taking action um, to take care of our our environment. Um, Talk to me specifically the air and electricity. Um, but uh, and in one of the biggest cities in the world, New York City. Um, New York City, which uses a lot of elect- electricity. I mean, a lot of electricity because of all the skyscrapers, everything there, right? So, yeah, the right. Em- the oh, yeah, em- you can see New York City from space, literally. The Empire State Building is now one hundred percent powered by wind. Okay, that's pretty badass. Yeah, that's along, pretty badass. Along with thirteen other buildings in New York City as well. Do you know that like all of Switzerland, I think it's Switzerland, um, is powered by the windmills. Sn- and, well, and solar panels. Mm-hmm. They're powered on smaller power grids with solar panels by neighborhood. Yep. 
Yep, in Germany. So everybody's towering each other. The neighborhood I lived in in Germany, every single house has them on their roof. Um, But anyways, we're big, big dumb here, but we are. We are. But anyway, so the beloved New York City landmark (laughs) Empire State Building is now run entirely by wind energy, making it a green new year for the 15,000 people working inside that building alone. Um, Yep, yep. The Empire State Realty Trust and Company, which owns the 102-story skyscraper along with 13 other buildings, they uh, signed a contract with Green Mountain Energy to power its uh, real estate portfolio in uh, throughout New York and Connecticut with wow. renewable wind electricity. Wow. Yeah. So cool. That's pretty cool. Like, not just doing it on that one building, but really putting that out there. Guys, I'm telling you... It, it, the problem is, is you have hard-headed knuckleheads out on the oil fields and the oil rigs that don't like this. But I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there going like, guys, if you can build, listen to me, if you can go out in the middle of the Gulf of fucking Mexico, guys, and find oil that's been buried for fucking 50 million years, I'm sure that you can fucking build a wind turbine. So turbine. listen. It's just with, called pivoting your job, bro. With it's okay. this happening... Um, it's already delivered a 40% reduction in energy use and emissions there now. That's what's up. We got to stop on fossil fuel, guys. I, I don't think people understand how crazy it's getting. Like, dude, there's parts of the tundra that there hasn't been tundra grass in literally 10,000 years that there's tundra grass now. So it's, listen, it's insane. Like, it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. It's estimated now to have avoided the production of 450 million pounds of carbon dioxide. That's equivalent to the savings if every New York State household turned off all their lights for a month. God damn. Yeah, or the... First ad- off, why are you using so much electricity before, though, bro? And it's, like, can we revisit yeah. that? It says, or, <laughs> or the addition of two central parks to New York City. That's how much they've saved. Damn. Yeah. That's like two central That's parks consuming that, that, that CO2 is what they're saying. And you want to talk about right. money? They, with this, the expected result is more than $800,000 in savings the first year. Because mm. you're, you're off the grid. You are no longer completely reliable on the grid. I just thought this was cool, man. Like... You know, I do believe though that you should have like like for instance like my whole block should be solar panel a solar panel grid not just my house because I do believe that it, it kind of takes a village if you know what I mean because like while house A has ten people living there they're absolutely going to use more electricity than house B but house B has the same right. exact amount of roof space to help charge the battery or the batteries on the block so it's cool man dude I'm telling you guys like listen. I, I, I do not want, like, I, I think you guys need to understand that smart pivoting is okay. We cannot leave the coal community. We cannot leave the, the, the oil field workers and roughnecks behind. We can't leave the, um, the gas finders, the, the frackers. You get your fracking out of here. Get the frack out of here. We can't leave those guys behind. But I'm telling you, you can't tell me that it's complicated, to, that complicated to pivot from digging for oil and natural gas to putting up turbines or fabricating um, solar panels. And, and, you know, we got, and I know, look, I get it, man. I love doing what I do, but I got to pivot sometimes too, guys. I love running offices, well, but it's just I'm, not there anymore. The offices have been moved overseas. I pivoted. It's okay. I'm hoping that this trends to other bigger cities like in Texas and, you know, Florida, I places just, like that. I just don't want the fossil fuel people that work in those industries to, uh, to think that, like, we just want to ditch them. That's That was never part of my plan. Just to throw Biden out there, that was never part of his plan. The plan was to get people to pivot, not fucking leave them behind. Yeah. That was never the plan to leave well, them behind. Yeah, why, would, why would you want people to be poor? And, and die. And out. And no, di- down and or, out. Or, or die of poison so you can be rich. Yeah, so this is really cool. And I'm, ac- I'm super excited to see, you know... How it progresses into other other areas of our country. I really hope right. that it you know that it does. Yeah, I, like I said, unless you live in the Arctic North or South, you get sunlight, which means you can use solar power. It's that yep. simple. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I Air just, Force Academy has a solar plant. 
Dude, I always find it fascinating. City of Colorado Springs yeah. is yeah. always Thank has you. been talking about. Check this out. I always find it fascinating that the military is always like on the forefront of what will save them money, right? <laughs> and yet the, the very people that fund them to build these solar complexes and these wind complexes for the bases <laughs> are out in public saying that in the public world, though, you know, that doesn't really help nothing. Our, it's good enough for our military. But it doesn't help nothing. Motherfucker, I own a Glock because they're good enough for our military. I am having an AR built because assault rifles are good enough for my military. You know what I'm saying? Like, it makes sense to me that if it's good enough for y'all, it's good enough for me, you know? So, all I'm saying is, yo, like, if it's good enough to protect the national security and the financial security of our military, it's got to be good enough to protect my security and my financial security. Right, I, th- I think, and healthier, For healthier, it, healthier. Now, listen, there, I, there's arguments about this and that, but the reality is, is the emissions reductions is is cool, uh, you know, and and it's just we we got all because the, it's such a polluted state, anyways, or city, I should say. We could it's put such up, a dude. We could put up so. wind turbines, like literally, a, a, a farmer would have to give up, like literally, the size of like a, a of a of a small like two bedroom house area to build a turbine up. Right in the middle of the farm field. That could be his power source right. for the entire fucking farm. Right. And you put up a hundred of those and you power the grid going into the city. You want to bridge the gap behind those folks out there in the country and the folks in the city and the difference in thinking? I'd say start with turbines and and start with them actually producing some of our electricity here in the city and see the difference in the relationship. Because a lot of the times, um, people out in the country are like, Bow to me, yield to me, because I provide your fucking food. And a lot of people are like, nah, fuck you, dude. And a lot of them aren't like that. So I think, but there is there is definitely a huge gap between living domestically in a city versus living out in the country. And there is, um, and, and I do believe that politics has helped play a part in, div- in driving that gap and dividing that gap even further. But um, but yeah, if you wanted to bridge the gap between society, societal's differences, let's start with just something simple that we can all agree, like solar and wind, that's better. And as a farmer, you don't have to give up a huge plot of farmland for a solar field. Just go with the wind turbines. It takes up the placing of a few panels, and you have solar. I mean, you have wind power. And let's just say that in Colorado, <laughs> wind is never an issue. Fuck <laughs> me, it's never an issue. Anyway, um, that, every afternoon. That's a really cool story, which obviously opens up a huge conversation into climate change, the things we can do better. Um, I'll tell you guys, there's a documentary that came out, I want to say in like 2016, 17 time frame with Leonardo DiCaprio on climate change. He was uh, the voice of it, and it followed him around through like going out to the climate summit and stuff like that, um, the Paris Climate Accord, all that stuff. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, it's it's really worth watching. It'll, it, it reminds you of how little you have to do to make a difference. Like, Cammy and I don't eat beef hardly ever. I eat beef like once or twice a month now. It, it's just, if I, if I can get some hunting meat off some homies, I'd rather do that than consume beef which is actually adds just as much pollution to the atmosphere methane gas check this out guys one cow's fart is like as much gas as a car puts out in admissions going like 10 miles up the street or something crazy like that it's literally something crazy like that methane gas is like four times or five times the carbon um, molecule base or whatever the hell they the scientists call it. You know, I'm not a scientist, but I understand what they're saying. It's like four <laughs> times the, the the gas coming out of a cow's butthole. And if we ate less g- cow, less cow would sell. There'd be less need for cow. Um, but America is ravenous on that cow. I'm not. I actually prefer chicken and pork, to be quite frank with you. Pig farts Cattle on his farms bed. need to also have hemp farms on Dude. them. Dude, dude, hemp absorbs so much carbon out of the atmosphere. On that note, hemp could save the planet right along with solar and wind, and everybody can find jobs in that, and farmers can still farm hemp just right alongside everything else. Yep. We, guys, we if we don't change our way of thinking now, forget forget reversing stuff. We have just got to like stop this shit within the next four to five years. Um, not full stop, but start stopping it in the next four to five years. I've, I'm, I'm putting a lot on the Biden administration for climate change because we've got to start pivoting now, and that's just to take right. that's to take a glancing iceberg blow. 
Otherwise, we're going to take this bitch head on, and we're headed for a fucking head on collision, and it's not going to be good. Um, it's just really not. So anyway, um, like I said, this is a conversation that could be an entire topic on politically stoned, which I'm going to keep that in mind. <laughs> let's go. Let's get out of here for the day. <laughs> Don't forget, short week this week for right, us. Have a great day. Got some crazy dental work getting done tomorrow after the show, so we're going to take the whole rest of the week yes, off. Sir. Wednesday, you are. No, it's Tuesday. But it's Tuesday after the show, though. Oh, okay. That's why we're taking Wednesday through Friday off or whatever. Yeah. We'll see how you feel.